from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. This is your game now, gentlemen. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And Happy New Year. I'm living it up here. That's right. Happy New Year. Brand new year. Yeah, we've been off in the last two weeks, in case you didn't guess. And the great thing about uh, radio, of course, is the average listener listens about an hour a day, maybe a little less. That's the average. Some people listen all the way through. Some people listen for five minutes. But uh, when you run reruns, most people have never heard those shows because they only listen an hour a day. And we have several hours every day. So I hope you enjoyed the reruns. Thank you for sticking with us. And uh, here we are, back and ready to go. Now, I've got to tell you, and I have uh, had this conversation before, but I want to I caution you that although I've discussed this before, this is not a rerun. It's 2009. Barack Obama's about to take office. just want to make it clear that uh, although some of you a year ago may have heard me discuss this. It has to be discussed again. And uh, just like I said about reruns, many of you probably missed that show anyway, so you never got a chance to talk about this. All right. The highest rated TV show on New Year's Eve. What was it? What was it? No, it was not Mr. Roboto, uh, Carson Daly. No. Number one show, New Year's Eve. Yes. What did they call it? Dick Clark's Rockin' New Year's Eve with Ryan Seacrest. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> now, let's get away from whether the show is any good. Because, honestly, New Year's Eve shows, no matter what you watch... Whether it's Carson Daly, whether it's Univision, <laughs> whatever it is, generally consists of a bunch of people who have nothing to say, and they are just killing a lot of time. By the way, who was that little southern Twinkie on there with the uh, sparkly uh, eyelids? Kelly Pickler. Kelly Pickler. Who is that? <laughs> she was on American Idol. She was on American Idol. And why was she on this show? By the way, she was asking in-depth questions like the following. Kelly Pickler, here was one of the questions she asked. What would make it a happy new year for you? And she's on live. God, if there was ever a time I wished I was in Times Square. If those were at shills to begin with, which I suspect they were, but... that. <laughs> of course, I'd had a few by that time, and yes, I was watching this show because I was fascinated. I was watching uh, Kelly Pickler doing this interview with somebody, and of course they're all saying, "Oh, I'm hoping for world peace, and I'm hoping, you know, that we have a we have change in the new year and things get better and people have j come on." And I'm saying, "Come on, say it, say it." You know what? We, I, just, I actually was doing it out loud. I was doing my answer to the question, and my answer to the question was this: You know what would make it a happy new year for me? To be on television and say, F you. But I wouldn't say F. I'd say the whole word. <laughs> that would have made it a happy new year. Why don't these people think on their feet? I mean, come on. You know, is uh, Kathy Griffin the only one who's going to curse on TV on New Year's Eve? Come on. By the way, when I first heard that quote, I thought she was talking about Anderson Cooper. I didn't know she was talking about somebody else. <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to make it any easier for you. But nonetheless, it was just the, my first reaction. And so she said the D word on TV and she outed Anderson Cooper. Oh, my God. But all right, so I'm watching this show, and you can tell I was, you know, uh, just uh, whizzing around the dial there, looking at what was on. And, of course, they did it again. 
And now the show's in HD, by the way. They did it again. I've met Dick Clark, and I think he's a great guy. I really do. Despite the fact that the goons from Fox threw us out of celebrity boxing that time, which was produced by Dick Clark, and he called us here to apologize. Uh, Dick's a great guy, and lots of people in Hollywood know him. When I say people in Hollywood, I I'm talking about like uh, you know people in the business who've done uh, small jobs or appeared on one of his shows or something. Everybody has good things to say about Dick Clark, and and I've been on his shows too. I was on a, a TV show he had where Danny Bonaducci and Mario Lopez were two of the hosts on it. In, in fact, Dick was one of the hosts on it, called uh, The Other Half. Um, I was there. I spent time with Dick. Uh, I think he's a great guy. A great guy. A great guy. And a legend in broadcasting, and I'm not saying this facetiously. I really mean it. And uh, un unfortunately, some time back, uh, Dick, who is beloved... Beloved by the American people and also by people who know him, um, unfortunately suffered a stroke, and that's that's sad. And I, uh, I, I know people who have been through that. I know what the rehab is like. I know how much suffering there is, pain, difficulty, how much work it takes, just to get back to being able to speak a sentence. I understand all that. Uh, I don't mean to make light of Dick Clark at all. In fact, I uh, wish him nothing but the best and a continued recovery, and I am hoping against hope that his rehab continues and he continues to improve in all of that. I really do. But having said all of that, uh, this, this show that Dick Clark has hosted uh, since 1972, it has been on ABC since 1972 every New Year's Eve, um, and by the way, when it started, it was not the number one show. When uh, Dick started doing that show, what Johnny Carson was still on at 11.30 on NBC, and I believe Johnny Carson used to do a live show on New Year's Eve. And uh, also uh, Guy Lombardo. Ever heard of Guy Lombardo? Oh, my God. You know, the song Auld Lang Syne came from Guy Lombardo. Guy Lombardo was the leader of one of these ballroom orchestras from the 40s. And they used to have him on CBS every year playing Auld Lang Syne. On New Year's Eve, and that was, you know, generally the number one show, if not the Tonight Show. And Dick Clark came on, and everybody laughed. And it turned out that that show now has the longevity, and has been the most successful, and is the number one show on New Year's Eve. So I understand, I'm a student of it, I understand what's gone on there. Dick Clark has been a legend in so many ways, and has been so successful at just about everything he's done. All right? But, um, unfortunately, for reasons I don't understand, uh, Dick insists on appearing on his New Year's Eve broadcast, despite the fact that times have been tough for him. And, um, again, Dick Clark was revered for, for so many things, not the least of which was that he appeared to never age. I mean, he just looked fantastic uh, right up into his 60s and beyond. I mean, he looked so fantastic and boy-like and everything, and uh, it was one of the great things about Dick Clark. Didn't matter how old he got, he looked remarkable. He looked fantastic. Now, for me, if I have had a career like that, based on looking fantastic, based on, you know, looking confident, looking professional, uh, being uh, also a professional broadcaster with a great voice, sounded great. How many years? 30 years of American Bandstand? I mean, everything, you name it. Everything he did, everything he touched turned to gold. You know, if it were me, and I'm not Dick Clark, believe me, and I understand that I would have a long way to go to be Dick Clark. If it were me, and and I were going through rehab from a stroke, I would want to you know, step back from the limelight. I would want, you know, if, if you want Ryan Seacrest to be your host, I would get out of his way. Because they put Dick on the air. And this time, unlike previous New Year's Eves where they've done this, I think they've done this the last two New Year's, this time they had, you know, tight shots of Dick. Like you, rather than having some slightly fuzzy, slightly out of focus shot of Dick Clark, you had a real good look at him. And, um, you know, the way I look at this is if you want to have victims of stroke 
on television. I say put them on Oprah Winfrey. I say put them on Rachel Ray. I say put them on with Montel Williams. Have them talk about, uh, you know, uh, what that's like, what rehab is like, how it's been, where you're going. Uh, will you ever recover? Is there hope for people who have strokes, how to avoid strokes? This is all very valuable, and I think that there's certainly a place for it on television. I do. But you know where I think is not the place for it? New Year's Eve. When people are celebrating, when people are looking to be entertained, when they are looking to be happy. It does not make me happy on New Year's Eve to be watching Dick Clark even though it's a miracle that he is sitting there doing a television program, even for the few minutes that he's on, it is not what I would call the way I want to celebrate a holiday. And by the way, I've met Dick Clark. Would I like to go see him or spend time with him or talk to him? Or, Yeah, absolutely I would. It's just that being on television implies a, a level of entertainment and I don't want to be sad. I don't want to feel badly for somebody. I don't want to be looking going, oh, my God. And yet, if you watched it, and you've seen Dick Clark in the past, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that you would say, oh, poor guy. Poor guy. What I'm saying is Dick Clark has nothing to prove. He's done everything in the business. He has succeeded at everything. He's made more money than most of us can ever imagine. He has earned the right to sit back, to rehab. You want to own the show? You want to be Dick Clark Productions? You want to be the one who pays Ryan Seacrest to do the show? That's all well and good. But why go on television on New Year's Eve? This doesn't make sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-862. The Tom Likas Show. With the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. And the highest ratings we've had in a very, very long time. And thank you for that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Many people have noticed less commercials, less breaks, shorter breaks. You've noticed, you've responded, and the ratings are going through the roof. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. All right, Dick Clark appearing on New Year's Eve. Again, nothing Nothing bad about Dick Clark. I can't think of a bad thing to say about the guy. He's uh, uh, honestly a genius and a legend of the broadcasting business, and I, I mean that uh, in all sincerity. I just don't think appearing on New Year's Eve is a good look. Maria on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, you know, Tom, I totally agree with you. And a lot of people would disagree with us and think we're mean and vicious, but I agree with you. He needs to just stay home. I, I, I'm not saying uh, don't work. I'm not saying don't do interviews. I'm just saying New Year's Eve is a night for celebration. Right. I know. I know. And my sister and I were commenting that it's time for him to kind of stay at home, relax, and don't do the show anymore. Right. It's now time to pass the torch. I think so. And you do have Ryan Seacrest there doing it. And he right. is certainly a more than credible uh, successor. Right. He's very enthusiastic about the job. It, it honestly, it takes somebody who can be enthusiastic with not much to work with. Right. And if you're the host of American Idol, I think that's certainly the case. Very credible. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, and, and by the way, the ratings of the show are generally still high, and uh, they beat the other shows that are on on New Year's Eve. I think if Dick Clark passed the torch, I don't think it would hurt them. In fact, honestly, I think it would help. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so many people disagree with us. My sister and I get so much response to say, oh, you guys are so mean and you're discriminatory. And it's like, no, he needs to retire and move on, period. Yes. Well, I, come on. Uh, what if somebody was uh, in a fire and their face was disfigured beyond belief? Are you going to put them on on New Year's Eve? Right. I, exactly. I, I understand how terrible that is, but come on. I know. Uh, I the know. rest I of see. television and movies is all about how you look. And Q scores 
and how, how much people like seeing you. Yep. And I, by the way, if Dick Clark wants to do a primetime special on stroke and stroke victims, I'm in. Do it. Totally. He'd be the best person to do that show. Totally. This is New Year's Eve we're talking about. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Maria, thank you. Appreciate thank you. the call. Stephen on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Stephen. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Good, good. Um, you know what? On this one, I think uh, I got to disagree with you. I think uh, I think um, Dick Clark really he deserves a pass uh, on this, um, just because I think that the level that he's reached, the iconic level that he is at, I, I you know, I think it's just one of those things where people will really miss the fact that he's not involved with the show. You know, um, the, I. The, just the cameo appearance is, is good that he's doing, and that's enough. But um, but it's not you know, a cameo appearance. He's on for, for, for quite an extended period of time. Yeah. yeah, he is. I mean, throughout the show, he comes on in short short spurts. But I'm just saying, I think that um, because of the level, you know, of his of his you know his, his icon, um, I think he, they really need to keep him on. It's kind of a nostalgic type of thing. But too, they I really think. don't need to keep him on. I mean, I miss Johnny Carson being on the Tonight Show. Uh, they didn't bring him back on New Year's Eve after he was fired or after he uh, was eased out or whatever they no. did with him. No. That was that. No, true, true. But I think people, in general, people don't like change. I think people are, you know, creatures of, of, of habit. And, and I think every year they expect to see Dick Clark in one in well, way, I, one I way or another. I imagine there were people who expected to see Guy Lombardo, too. But guess what? Now they get <laughs> David Letterman. Yeah, I know, I know, but I think as long as the guy is living, breathing, and and can and can communicate. So you less, say if he's in an iron lung, wheel him in on a gurney. You're saying uh, if if he was in a horrific fire and his face were like burned off, just put him on there anyway. And I don't know. Yes, I mean, call me call me nostalgic or something. He had but all his I, arms and legs uh, amputated, and he was just uh, you know a shell of his former self. Just wheel him in. Well, I don't know. I just again, you Where know, do you draw it, the it, line. It, huh? Where do you draw the line? I think you draw the line where the guy, if he passed away, obviously, you know, he's not going to be on the show anymore, or he's, or if he's, he's unable to 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 communicate or make any kind of appearance. I think you let him do it. You give him a pass just because, uh, you know, I, I think a good example of this is the New Year's Day parade. I mean, uh, the same two people have been doing it for many, many years, and then they got rid of the, the, the woman because she was older or something. You know, and that hurt their, their viewership, I think. You know, and then they finally brought her back this year. So it was a nice thing, you know. So you, you see that? You, you, she's so unimportant to you, you cannot remember her name. Oh, uh, Edwards, I think her name is. Last name is... I, but, I, you know, I'm so... What's her name? What is her name? The one well, what, her first name is Vicky... No, no, no. <laughs> I have Vicky no idea. Lawrence, yes. I know the voice, and I love the voice with 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 uh, Bob Eubanks. You know, that's part of New Year's Day. You know, that's just it. So she's she's so else. important to you, you can't remember her full name. <laughs> I didn't say she was important to me, Tom. I just said that she's part of you know, that whole thing, and and you you know, it's just a it's just a tradition. What just, read, you, reading product placement for UPS? <laughs> that's what you miss. <laughs> I mean, have you ever watched that parade, the the Rose Parade? And, and 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 what do they actually say? You don't really care. I mean, you're in, in passing, here's the UPS you're float. Here's the <laughs> here's the Ralph's float. Yeah, you know, it's just the way they go back and forth between the two of them. Oh you know, yes, it, that banter. Yes. You know, I mean, Very I'm not in love with them, or I could care less about them, but. You know, I want my new You know, if Bob today. Eubanks would go back and do questions from the newlywed game, I'd be more interested. But come on. <laughs> You're right, Tom. Anyway. <laughs> take me out, Kobe style. Here you go, Stephen. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, here's Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a young man. I'm old enough to remember Dick Clark from the early to mid seventies, and so is my wife. And uh, she she started to sob when uh, when he came on. She started to sob, but not in a good way, I imagine. No, not 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 in a good way. And I got to tell you, I got a little choked up myself. For about two seconds, I thought it was like a Saturday Night Live skit, and then I realized that was really him, and I felt really bad. That was not what you wanted on New Year's Eve, was it? 
No, it's not. It's not what I was expecting, and uh, I, I felt I, it wasn't very festive. You know, I remember Dick Clark, uh, like I said, thirty, thirty-five years ago, and it wasn't very festive. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, get you want to put Dick Clark on TV? Uh, take two hours, take three hours, take all of prime time one night, put him on. You can talk about his uh, history as a pioneer in broadcasting, and you can have uh, a, a tribute to him. You can have a tribute to him every year if you wanted to. Uh, if you want to make it about uh, stroke and trying to recover from a stroke, uh, put on other people, uh, uh, victims of stroke, people who've recovered, stories of hope. And w what will happen to me? Uh, can I get through this? Great, great idea for a show. They haven't done it. That would be a good show to do. But why, did, why put him on on New Year's Eve? They could put him up on the platform. The confetti comes down. He's waving to the crowd. It's still Dick Clark's New Year's Eve. He's still, you know, the CEO. But, um, you know, he's, he's lost the ability to talk, and, and all he's doing is uh, taking away those uh, memories I had from the 70s and 80s. That, that's how I feel about that. Alex, thank you very much for the call. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Now here are six days a week. We are here Saturdays from 2 until 6. Make a note of it. Saturdays from 2 until 6. On 97.1 FM Talk and BlowMeUpTom.com. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Dick Clark appeared again on his own New Year's Eve special with Ryan Seacrest. And as much as I love Dick Clark personally and professionally, I think he's a great guy. A real legend. Uh, somebody who deserves to be admired. I just don't think it's right for him to be on New Year's Eve. What do you think about that? Cindy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I just, I just wanted to say I agree, and I consider television, when I watch television, it's all about performance. And to me, it's no different than a professional athlete, a football player. I watch uh, MotoGP motorcycle racing. They need to know when to retire, and they need to retire at the top. It's really sad to watch someone who's hanging on beyond their productive years and that's the memory you're left with them, and I just find that sad. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, uh, don't you want to remember uh, Dick Clark uh, being uh, so young for so many years, so boyish, uh, uh, as host of so many highly rated, successful programs on TV? There was a time when any time you saw Dick Clark on TV, you'd stay tuned just because you liked him. You liked him a lot. Absolutely. It's all about good memories, and that's us who are not involved in broadcasting or television. That's part of our memories growing up. And actually, now that you've said this, I feel fortunate I didn't get a chance to watch that. So I still remember Dick Clark as a young, vivacious person, and, and I'm glad I still have that memory. Thank you for that. Appreciate the call, Cindy. It's Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. I just, I agree with other callers. I remember Dick Clark growing up, and, you know, you watch American Bandstand, the bloopers and all that. He was the youngest old man on TV, and and now, you know, that's that's all ruined. I was telling uh, your screener that uh, they might as well put on the Christian Children's Fund, you know? You're out there having partying, drinking, having a good time, and then all of a sudden you see Dick Clark on there, and it's like, okay, well, there goes my buzz. Somebody called in earlier, and I'm sorry they didn't hold on. Somebody called in earlier and said, what's next, Stephen Hawking doing a New Year's Eve show? <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, you're celebrating, having a good time, smiling, you know, and you just want to keep, continue having a good time. You know, you don't want to see somebody that you grew up, you know, liking on TV. All of a sudden, you know, he can't even... You know, I got, I got an idea for you. Let's, let's do a paddle of burn victims doing New Year's Eve. We could have that. Uh, uh, we could have uh, uh, people with no arms and no legs. They could host yeah. uh, New Year's Eve. Maybe we could just have wanna, freaks and crips New Year's Eve. I want to know how come they didn't learn their lesson on, from last year. Well, again, I, I think they thought that was a great thing to do, putting Dick on there. I think they thought that was good. I, I, <laughs> I don't think they saw any negatives in it. Yeah, and then he started slurring all over his wife in the end. I didn't see that, but uh, Gary was telling me about that. I was like, oh, my God, can they just end it already? 
Thank you, Rick, for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Jacob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Long time, long time listener, first time caller. Cool. Great. Um, yeah, calling about the Dick Clark topic, obviously. And um, really what I think about it, uh, the, a few callers ago she said, you know, you just should end on a high hat. You know, I mean, if, if you had so many good years, why would you want someone to remember you for, you know, the way he's been for the last two years? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want that at all. I mean, I, I still don't understand, you know, how, how, would, how does his friends not come and tell him, you know, why are you continuing to do this? I mean, people have to be saying things about it, especially around him. How does he not know that, you know, that that's being done like that? So, I, I just don't get it. I really don't. And uh, I don't think we're being mean here. I think I'm trying to be compassionate. I'm saying uh, give Dick Clark a forum on television at an appropriate time. Exactly. And, and I remember last year, I mean, I'm, I'm over in Texas with uh, my girlfriend's parents, and I'm just, the, all, all I hear the whole time is, oh, Dick Clark, oh, I remember him from before, I remember him from before. And who really, like you're saying, on New Year's wants to hear that. You want to have a good, happy spirit to bring yourself into the new year. And honestly, I don't want to watch a person that can't really even read what he's supposed to be reading or even, I guess, pronunciate it. So, I mean, to me... They should have, I guess, he, he has the opportunity to be able to pass on the torch to who he wants and create a new era. So why doesn't he do that and, you know, just choose to do it that way? To somebody who pronunciates properly. Absolutely. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mike in Winnipeg, listening to the online stream on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dad. <laughs> Son. <laughs> a long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. I had to uh, call in this time and stick up for Dick Clark. Uh, I, you know what? That's what kept me glued to the TV, saying that, you know, he's going to be there. I, I wanted to see what's the guy look like now, I, you know, what's going on with him. And, uh, you know, him and – was that his wife at the end? Yes, I, apparently it was. Well, you know what? When I saw that, that, that was, I thought, really cool. I thought that was really – a couple you of like old that. people – yeah, I thought it was really good. I mean, you know, he's been through, he's been around a long time. A lot of people know him. Uh, and to, to be, you know, sticking it out to this day, even though it goes against your rules with his wife, and then giving his wife a kiss of love. You I'll know, tell you what, that, if, that, if they wanted to limit it to him giving his wife a kiss at midnight, I'll buy it. That, but that I don't. Me. I don't want to see someone who I loved, someone who I thought was just the most amazing talent, somebody who was a great broadcaster. I don't want to see him struggling for his words. I want to remember him being fantastic at what he did. Well, you know what? I don't mind seeing him the way he is now. I I, I liked him the way he was before, and you know, older. Stuff it's, happens. The, but the, the point is, most of them are gone from television by the time it happens. Johnny Carson did not get older on television. Johnny Carson was gone in 1992, and he died a couple of years ago. Yeah, but, but, but you know what I mean? The, he didn't I keep believe... coming back. He didn't come on on New Year's Eve. He didn't pop up on Larry King and places like that. He walked away. Yeah, but just just recently, we're getting to the point where the uh, the American census is saying that there's going to be more older people around. We're not than talking about people. we're not talking about keeping Dick Clark off because he's old. We're talking about keeping him off on New Year's Eve because and, he's hard to watch. And you know what? If he were to go on a show, if there were a th for if, Ryan, uh, if heaven forbid, I, I can't believe it. I'm saying heaven I, forbid. If heaven forbid Ryan Seacrest had a stroke, I wouldn't want to see him either. This is not a question of age. Oh, there's there's new things called reality TV. You know, this and you. This isn't '92 when Johnny Carson was around. This is something yeah, but this new is not. But the, the New Year's Eve is not a freak show. Okay, this is not uh, some freak show on the CW network. This well, is New Year's Eve. Well, check it out. We're talking about Dick Clark today. Right. So, you know, whatever they did on that TV station, somebody made it click. You know, whether you liked them or you didn't like them, you're ta we're talking about it. Well, and that's a good well, thing. Yeah, well, you say that, but, uh, uh, you know, there's all kinds of other things you could put on there that people would be talking about that wouldn't necessarily be good for the show. You know, if Dick were senile, he pulled his pants down on television, we might be talking about it, but I don't think ABC would want to be putting that on on New Year's Eve. If you know what I mean. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Liz on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Hello, my darling. How are you? Doing great, dear. This is my very first time that I'm disagreeing with you. It had to happen eventually. By the way, are we having a drink today for the new year? I, uh, I've i been having them. I've been having them, trust me. New Year's Eve, the party was at my house this year. Sounds and, like it's still at your house. In the background, yeah, it was at my house, and let me tell you, it got crazy. But in the background, very low, of course, we always have that, you know, on, no matter who's uh, dancing, smoking, drinking, doing whatever, it's always in the background. And it's so interesting that you brought this up. There was a total discussion about this at my house. I mean, the party sort of stopped, okay? I was on the side of... Dude, it is his, it's called uh, Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve. Don't you think he deserves to be on there? If yeah. the guy didn't want to be on there, he wouldn't but be on he, there. It's called that because he owns the show. He is Dick Clark Productions, but and it is his program. On. I understand that he wants to be on, but why does the network accede to his wishes? I, I, I don't know, but I, I was on the side of, and I'm 29, but I, I've seen the, you know, the, the pictures of American Bandstand, and I've, I've been watching them since I was a little girl. We always watched the show. It, hardly anybody was watching it anyway, and of course, when Ryan comes on, he's cute, he's young, but you made that little analogy that if he had, like, a little bit of a, you can't compare Ryan to, um, Oh, God, you cannot compare those two. Um, I don't care how much American Idol. But, you know, Tom, it's just, come on, it's Dick Clark. And, yes, everybody at the party stopped and said, oh, my God, he looks like uh, crap. Okay? Not because I know and the you words think you that, can you say. think that's good? Everybody said that, but then... The whole little issue started on, yeah, he looks like crap, but he's on, and don't you think that that's good for him? And no, it didn't take away from the buzz. Everybody was still buzzed, but I was on the side of the guy still wants to do it. Let the, let the guy do it. Oh, my goodness. So and let me ask you a deal. question. If he were on his deathbed, if he were, you know, just before <laughs> last rites, and it happened to be December 31st, should they put a camera in there, and you know, like an okay, HD camera? But he's not. But Tommy's not. But I'm asking, where do you draw the yet. line? I'm asking where the line is drawn. May, okay, if he. You have to admit, we're awfully close to it now. <laughs> if he's on his deathbed, and if he loses his lung, or if he has to come in with one of those breather things, then I think I don't want to see him. But as long as. Um, God, it was kind of tight. If Dick was lying and stayed at a funeral home and his wife wanted to lean over at midnight and kiss him, should they put that on? I never think you're mean, even when you're freaking vicious. I love it. But with this, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe he's doing this because this guy is like, he's like, he is. The, and the other man that said about Stephanie Edwards that he didn't even know her name. Oh, that's her he name? Stephanie right Edwards. Too. Yes. He was right, too, because when they brought her back, the, the dumb banter between both of them, yes, this is the, you know, the, the horses that are trotting and blah, blah, blah. It was kind of freaking funny when they brought her back. I don't know. You, That's you, what I you thought it was freaking funny. Didn't her career end when Lucky Supermarkets went out of business? <laughs> Tom, I love you. You're going to cough like, up uh, love. Listen to you. You look, she's I like the human. You. She's I like the you, human. Not, she's like the human melanoma. This. Look at that woman. Come on. Uh, she. It's not the way she looks. She. It's just. <laughs> it's the banter between them. The you banter. Said it yourself. The banter. You're a is banter the fan. Part. And okay. I. I. Uh, I don't know. I just respect Dick Clark, and I think that. I respect um, him too. I just it, it, say, just say, stay there on New Year's Eve. Enjoy the evening. Come in at another time. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Like It Show. Tom Like It Show. Shorter breaks. Please, we get back to your ugly mug faster. That's right. 1-800-5800-TOM. ABC put Dick Clark on on New Year's Eve again. 
Was It Pretty? What do you think about that? It's 1 800 5 800 Tom Rosa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to call and then say I didn't watch the show, but I saw the previews leading up to it. And, and honestly, I just think Dick Clark can go out however he wants. He can go out as an old, decrepit man or, or at his prime, the way we all remember him. But. As a viewer, I just think it's such a downer and so depressing to see somebody on live air pretty much dying before your eyes. And, and it's sad to say that, but this poor guy has gone through so much. And it makes me more sad and makes me feel bad and almost makes me feel guilty for my health. And I kind of made a comment to your screener. I, I might as well be watching Feed the Children if I want to, you know, see something that's going to depress me. <laughs> the Feed the Children New Year's Eve rocket special. There you go. You know, it's it's such a downer, and I think it's a network's responsibility. I mean, it's probably owned by him, but it's their responsibility to make sure that they're getting their ratings, and this is not the way to do it. The Goodwill Industry is rocking New Year's Eve. <laughs> so that's that's my opinion. I mean, everybody's entitled to their own, but that's the way I see it. All right, Rosa. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Doing Man, great. Doing great. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it was really uh, shocking for me. I didn't see uh, last year's New Year's Rockin' Eve, but when I turned in this year and uh, Dick Clark came on and I did not know what he was saying, it just... It was it was just shocking. Like, I didn't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You didn't know he'd had a stroke? No, I, I didn't know that he had a stroke, and I don't oh know if he had a stroke by some stairs, but his teeth were all over the place. I, it, it just shocked me. Like, Yeah, now, I'm no expert on stroke. I, I, I've known people who've had strokes, but I've never seen that effect where, I mean, am I mistaken? Does his head look like it's shaped differently, or does, it looks like he lost some teeth or something? I mean, again, I don't mean to make fun of Dick Clark. Uh, quite the contrary. I, th that's really tough. That's got to be difficult. But, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd want to... If I were having open-heart surgery, I wouldn't have a Thanksgiving special so you could watch me in the hospital. Yeah, definitely. It was, it, it was just... Like it, chest it, cavity it, ripped it, open, you know, and they're in there with a the stent. <laughs> I definitely remember him as a kid, but, you know, like watching him talk, and there are periods where, you know, it just sounded like... Rah, rah, and, like, I didn't know it was... Like, especially having him count, I think that was the biggest mistake. <laughs> Why was that? I, I mean, like, it, it it just, like, everyone hated me, but, like, I couldn't help but just laugh with, you know, because, like, Taz, Ryan, like, he, he couldn't say it. Like, it, he can't even talk. Like, mind you, I've been drinking alcohol for the past hour, but that, yeah, that definitely threw me for a loop. I I understand. Jimmy, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Tom, how's it going, brother? It's going great. Long time first call, you know, long time listener, first time caller, yada, 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 all that good stuff. Hey, listen, man, you know, Dick Clark was a buzz kill and a half, man. And um, it just sucks, man. The guy had a stroke. People want to call up. Oh, I feel so bad for the guy. But do you really? You know what I'm saying, Tom? Do you really? <laughs> do they really care? Well, that's a good question, really. You know. I mean, I you know, the it. show ended at 2 a.m., and then they flipped to another channel. Exactly, man. Exactly. You know, it does suck. I mean, like they say, you know, Tom can go out however he wants, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, not Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Dick, Clark, Dick Clark can go out however he wants, you know. He put in so many years in the television business. But again, do you care? You know, what did, what did Dick Clark do for me? Nothing. If I was on the street corner asking for a dime, I'd doubt he'd throw me one, you know. And that's just the bottom line, Tommy. <laughs> well, thank you, Jimmy. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's AJ. Of the Tom like his show, hello. Hey, hey, or, hey, Tom, how's it going? Okay. Good. That was the whole Dick Clark situation. I was just uh, telling the guy earlier, you know, just like Penn State University does it with the football team, Paterno doesn't coach the team anymore, but he's still up there in the booth. Maybe you should have Dick Clark there, be, have his name behind the whole situation, but not hosting it per se. You can well, have yes. whoever else you want. Uh, you can call it Dick Clark's Rocket Eve with Ryan Seacrest. In fact, that's the name of it. Fine. Yeah. I got no problem with that. Right, exactly. And he can just, you know, sit there and maybe put his two cents in. People can see him, be happy with him. But the actual host of the show would be someone a little bit more presentable, uh, younger maybe, whatever. Well, Ryan Seacrest is already doing most of the show. Why not let him do the whole show? There you go, yeah. But, I mean, you know, it's it's fair. I think it's fair to say that Dick Clark can be there, but 
I'd maybe not say too much or do too much with it. I agree with you, AJ. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Aldo on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? It's going great. So, well, so basically, I kind of disagree with you about Dick Clark. And I think it was very motiva motivational what he did by being there. It was I mean, motivational? Was just, what were you motivated to do after you saw that? Well, because first of all, he's I mean, a man who went through a lot. And then him being there shows a lot. Showing he still has the gut, he still has the... Uh, the legs to run for more. What were you motivated to do after you saw it? What? Accomplish you more. Do more stuff. I mean, basically, I mean, do if, more? I if I go down, I can get up and keep going. That's what he's showing in there. I he see. Went down. He went up. Hell, why he went down? He got up and he's still doing that. I see. And you think that uh, that that's a good thing? Uh, to me, I think it is a good thing. You, know, you say you love him. You say you love him. Let me, all right, let, let me, Aldo, hang on a second. Steve, do you agree with Aldo? I do not agree with Aldo. Tell him why. If, okay, if there's somebody that has the utmost respect, you know, in their career and I have respect for him, and then to go out that way, it's ridiculous. It's like putting Muhammad Ali back in a boxing ring just so he, we can see him go out in tasteless style. Or like Christopher Reeves, let's put him like on another Superman movie or so while we're at it. Or, or even John Madden, throw him back in a football game, see what happens. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, well, what's going on? <laughs> Good point, Steve. Thank you. Aldo hung up. He did not want to debate. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? It's going great. Uh, it's, uh... I didn't get to watch the show, but I, I've been listening to you guys talk about it. And uh, you know what would have been super funny, man, is if just a little bit before the countdown, they all toasted to a glass of eggnog, and they all watched it dribble out the side of his face, you know. Ryan Seacrest would probably run up and go dob it with his tie, you know. I'm going to turn my mic off now because if I don't, you might hear me reacting to what you just said. The Tom Likas Show.